Hey, it's Hawking with Top Done, and today we're going to do a video on programming an ABS control unit on a 2015 Jetta to remedy a interesting fault code. So we're going to take you through the entire uh, process here and walk you through each of the steps that we did in order to troubleshoot this. So first thing here, I'm uh, going to talk about what we're going to do in the video. So we're going to talk about, uh, we're basically going to pre-scan the vehicle. We're going to look at a TSB that we found that's uh, relative or relevant to this specific fault code that we found. We're going to connect our T90000 topped on uh, programming charger. And then we're going to reprogram the ABS control module using the cloud-based programming service on the Top Don Phoenix Smart. And then we're going to perform the required basic settings, which you have to do anytime you do a module replacement, uh, reprogramming, or in some cases when you lose battery power. Uh, so we're going to take you through all of that in the video here. So the Phoenix Smart is what we're going to use in the video for the scan tool and cloud-based programming. And the T90000 is going to be our charging uh, programmer or programming charger. So we're going to pre-scan the vehicle here. And we'll pull up and show you what fault we've got in the vehicle currently. So we'll see it speed through everything here. We'll give it just a second. Okay, so we're on the main screen here. We're going to go ahead and pre-scan and we're going to time lapse this just so you can see everything a little bit quicker. And we'll do some time lapsing throughout the video here just to speed up the process. It's important to keep in mind that programming can take up to an hour or more in some cases, so don't rush it. So here's our pre-scan. The only fault we have is a 01325 tire pressure monitoring control module fault. Now why is that significant? This particular vehicle does not have a tire pressure monitoring control module. In fact, this particular vehicle uses the ABS module and the wheel speed sensors to determine tire pressure by measuring the speed of the wheels and comparing them. It looks at if you have a tire that has a lower pressure, it's going to have a different rotational speed. When that speed deviates beyond a certain point, the vehicle will activate the TPMS light. So it doesn't actually have a TPMS module. So the fact that we have a pro, uh, communication fault code related to the TPMS module makes no sense because we don't have a TPMS module. So we did some searching. We found this TSB. The TSB applies to the 2015 Jetta. You can see all engine codes and all transmission codes. And it's basically telling us, hey, if you have a uh, specific fault code, which we'll see in the next page here, there's a software update to fix this. So here's the fault code. If you have fault code 0778 steering angle sensor or 01325 TPMS control module. So we have the second fault code. Notice it's basically saying that there's a routine programmed into the software that can errantly trigger and go searching for this TPMS control unit when it isn't supposed to be looking for that. So that's what's happening here. Uh, I was driving this vehicle and kind of scratching my head going, why do we keep getting this recurring fault? There's no reason we should have this fault because it doesn't have the necessary control module for it to be even trying to talk to it. So we find that the, uh, the bulletin says, we need to reprogram, excuse me, reprogram the control unit. So you can see here in the bulletin, it tells us that the part numbers for the two ABS uh, control unit softwares are the two uh, right here on the left column under old software part number and the old software version. Then it tells you the new software part number and the new software version. Now, if we were using the factory uh, software to do this reprogramming instead of the cloud-based programming, uh, then we would need to know this SVM action code. However, you do not need to know that when you are doing stuff with the cloud-based programming. You will also note that the bulletin warns us that we may have to do uh, basic settings for these following sensors. So uh, G85, G200, G201, and G251. Uh, that is for those four sensors where there are related fault codes that will come up those are often going to be tripped again when you reprogram replace and program or 
lose power uh, for a related module that stores these codes. So in this case, the ABS module. So we're going to go ahead and proceed here along with our video. So now we're going to go into the online programming section of the tool. I'm going to connect the tool. And we will pull up our programming menu. Okay, so we're on the main screen here. Going to click on uh, Break Electronics. Actually, pardon me, we're going to go on Online Function. So we're going to go on Online Function and click on Online Programming. It's going to download some files. After we download the files, we're going to click Automatic Mode. And now it's going to search the database to see which modules we have stored on the database uh, which programming files are available. So we have four different choices, ECM, transmission, brake electronics, and uh, I believe it was central electronics. So we are now at the point where it has checked for the file. It sees that we have the file. You'll notice that the part number here matches up with the part number on the bulletin and the software index code 0166. That all matches up. It's actually already at the latest revision. However, even though it's at the latest revision, we're still getting this fault code. So we're going to go ahead and reflash this control module with that software version and see if that will remedy the fault. So it's saying, hey, do we want to select that particular software? You can see that the part numbers do match, and it also matches the part number in the TSB, and the software version 0166 matches not only what's currently in the module, but also the latest revision that was found in the technical service bulletin. So now it's going to download the file. You may need to connect to your VPN if it will not download the file, so keep that in mind. Connect to the VPN if you can't download the file. In this case, we were successful. We were able to download the file, no problem. So now we're going to go ahead and start the programming process. Again, this is time-lapsed, so don't think that this is real-time. You can see the little counter in the top right here. Uh, it's a time lapse. So we're speeding through. It's completed the programming. It's going to tell us to turn off the key for 30 seconds. So we're going to give it 30 seconds to let it complete the process. And then, after it's completed the programming, it's always going to check for fault codes. So this is completely normal. It's going to automatically clear the fault codes. Many times those fault codes will come back. Now it's going to show us the version of everything before and after we re reprogram the module. So you can see all of our versions are the same. Uh, all we did was refresh the file, reflash the file a second time uh, from the factory. It was obviously flashed, and we're reflashing it. The coding has not changed. The programming software index, everything else is the same. We just reflash the file to get rid of this fault code with relation to looking for a TPMS module that does not exist. So now it's completed the programming and we've got some fault codes. Now you always want to go back and re-clear all these fault codes again. So we're going to exit out of the online programming and go back to the topology screen. We're going to enter into the break control module and we're going to re-clear the fault codes and re-scan to see which faults we have. Gives us the version information about the module. So we're going to go ahead and recheck our codes, and we're going to re-clear them. Now we're going to check them again, and you can see the only faults we have are for basic settings. So we have four things that need basic settings run, just like we saw in the TSB. So now we're going to go into the online function of the tool. We're going to go into the vehicle just like we normally would, and we're going to go to online guided functions. The online guided functions menu is going to take us through the process of doing the basic settings on each of these related sensors that needs to be performed after the programming. This is a really useful tool that you will not find on the majority of scan tools out in the market. That's another reason why the top down excels in a some, uh, process like this. So we're going to go into the brake control module right away. I'm going to check it out, make sure everything's set to do the basic settings. Everything looks good. We see we've got the same faults. Now we're going to back out. We 
can see our DTCs there. So again, just rechecking to make sure that that's the only faults we have. Now we're back on the main screen. We're going to go to Online Guided Functions. Guided Functions right up here. So we're going to click on that Guided Functions. We're going to have to clarify the details of the engine uh, for this, the system. Now it's going to download some info and we're going to click on Brake Electronics. And we're going to click on Guided Functions. And now it's going to give us a big list of options. So now we're going to go through the basic settings. You can see this one right here. Basic setting of sensors G85, G200, G201, and G251. That's the one we're going to click on. And that's going to take us through a sequential basic setting on all four of those sensors. It's going to verify we have a steady voltage, which we do, because we have our T90,000 connected to the vehicle. We're going to hit Continue. It's going to take us to the system settings. We're going to go through each of these in sequence. Now, I skipped G85 because I like to do that one last because you have to test drive the vehicle. And we'll show you a slide at the end of this so you can see what you have to do to complete that basic setting. So we're going to go through the basic setting of the other three sensors and complete those. We see we've completed the basic setting on the second one. And now we've got one more left to do. Okay, so we finished the basic setting on that one. So we finished the basic setting on G85. We performed that. However, there's additional steps that need to be taken to make sure that that has been completed. It will continue to set a fault code for the steering angle sensor until we perform the additional step that has to be done, which is what they call a validation test drive. And we'll show you at the end of this whole video what that entails. So we see the only thing we have left is steering angle sensor. We have not completed the basic setting for that. We initiated it with the scan tool, but we still have to perform the test drive that they tell you to do in order to complete that basic setting. So we're checking all the other modules now for faults. We're going to time lapse this and speed this up so you can see. So we only have one other fault in the ECM. And this should be a communication fault, which is usually what you'll see. Sure enough, it is. Uh, anytime you're doing programming, some of the other modules may lose communication with that module that's being programmed and flag a fault. So we're just going to clear out that fault in the ECM. Now we know that there's no more faults in the ECM. So we have one fault left, which is just that steering angle sensor. Here's what you have to do to complete the basic setting on the steering angle sensor. So we're going to do it with the scan tool and initiate the function. Then we have to start the vehicle, turn the wheel all the way to the left once and all the way to the right once or vice versa, whatever you prefer. Then we have to drive the vehicle a short distance in a straight line on a level surface at a slow speed, so less than 12 miles an hour. Then we have to make sure that the steering wheel is nice and straight. When we finish our drive, then we have to stop the vehicle with the wheels pointed straight. And we have to make sure that the wheel does not get touched or disrupted. Then we have to keep the engine running and we have to go back in and check and see if the basic setting has completed. Otherwise, you can reinitiate it with the scan tool and perform this process again. Generally speaking, you will have a warning light on the dash that looks like a little steering wheel and that light will stay on until the basic setting has been completed successfully. Once the basic setting has been completed successfully, the light will automatically go out and the fault will go away. You can rescan it to check and verify that the fault is gone, but as long as that little steering wheel light on the dash goes out, you've completed the basic setting successfully, and you don't have any other concerns you need to be worried about with respect to G85 steering angle sensor. Again, you can rescan the vehicle if you want to, but you shouldn't need to once that light turns itself out. Okay, so that summarizes the basic setting that we had to complete. That's basically what we had to do in order to remedy this 01325 fault code. So again, that fault code was covered specifically in a bulletin talking about reprogramming this specific module, which was the ABS control module. We performed the reprogramming procedure using the top done uh, Phoenix Smart using the cloud-based programming. And once we did that, the only fault codes that came back were all for basic settings. 
Once we performed the basic settings, no more fault codes came up, everything was good to go, all the lights on the dash went out, and the vehicle performed normally. The TPMS uh, system began functioning normally, which again is part of the ABS module on this particular vehicle. You need to verify what version your vehicle has before you try to do what this video shows. Uh, but if your vehicle uses the wheel speed sensors in order to determine TPMS uh, pressures, it's inferring them, it's not directly measuring them, then this video would be applicable to your vehicle. But we just wanted to demonstrate how useful it is to have access to the cloud-based programming feature uh, on the scan tool. So all of the Top Don Pro Series tools have some form of the cloud-based programming. Whether or not we have the files on our servers, uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. It's, a not, uh, it's not a comprehensive uh, database with all the files. Uh, we only have some files for some modules for some vehicles. We do our very best to cover as many modules as we possibly can on as many vehicles as we can. But of course, the only person who has every file for every module is the vehicle manufacturer. So I appreciate you taking the time to watch this little video explaining how we fixed a very interesting fault on this 2015 Jetta uh, that might have tripped up a number of people and caused some confusion. Again, in theory, this vehicle should not have been able to set this fault because it was not equipped with this module. However, because of a software error, it did set this fault code. And again, using the Top Don uh, Phoenix Smart and also the T90000, we were able to reprogram the control module, perform the basic settings using the guided functions, and remedy the problem. So, thanks for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, watch all of our videos, and of course we appreciate you taking the time.